among the people invited are lots of charity chiefs who run those charities helping those women. Among them is the chief executive of the charity Sister Space. Uh, and her name is Ngozi Filani. She is one of those who's invited because of her great work in that field. She was spoken to by um, a, a former lady-in-waiting to the Queen, senior royal aide and aristocrat, uh, Lady Susan Hussey, age 83. Before we go into rights and wrongs, I'm going to read um, just the full transcript because a lot of people are saying she just asked this lady where is she from. What's the big deal? The full transcript, I think, explains what the big deal is. Right. So here's it goes. I'm going to do. I'm going to do Lady Lady Susan's accent, if that's okay with everybody. <laughs> I'm guessing I'm going to be right with this. Where are you from? Sister space was the reply from Miss Filani. No, where do you come from? We're based in Hackney. No, what part of Africa are you from? Can you see where this is going, folks? Uh, I don't know. They didn't leave any records, was the response. I love that response. Well, you must know where you're from. I spend time in France. Where are you from? Here, the UK. No, but what nationality are you? I'm born here and I'm British. No, but where do you really come from? Where do your people come from? My people, lady, what is this? Came the reply. Oh, I can see I'm going to have a challenge getting you to say where you're from. When did you first come here? Lady, I'm a British national. My parents came here in the 50s when, oh, I knew we'd get there in the end. You're Caribbean. No, lady, I am of African heritage, Caribbean descent, and am British nationality. Uh, lady, ladies and carriers, oh, so you're from, it just carried on. Um, no one, Rupert Bell, let's be clear. Mm. No one is disputing this conversation happened including mm. Lady Susan Hussey. Other people were witness to this. Other people were uncomfortable at the time. So we wrote this up and tweeted about it pretty quickly. Um, Prince William, um, now uh, the, the Prince of Wales, on a visit arriving in America, uh, along with uh, 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 the Princess of Wales, Catherine, um, he has said these were unacceptable comments. And Lady uh, Susan Hussey has basically resigned from any duties at Buckingham Palace. What do you make of that? Uh, I think it is completely... Uh, the royal family have done the right thing. Um, Lady Susan Hussey, it's not as if she hasn't been to receptions before. She knows the score. And I, I don't know what she was thinking. Um, and that's the problem. Well, we do know what she was thinking, that a black yeah. person couldn't be... But exactly. And why, in a sense, why was she even thinking it was the right conversation to be having when you are used to being out there? And that is the problem for the royal family. Does it family. tell us something about the royal household, generally about the royal family, amid, going back to the it, claims that, that Meghan and Harry made in that Oprah Winfrey interview? What it says is... It's, uh, an institution that may not be moving with the times quickly enough. And that is the problem for the royal family. And we've seen it. Um, the King and the Prince of Wales both want to see a modern royal family, but the institution is like a great big tanker that is at the moment trying to change because obviously it's had the Queen around for a long time and they did things a certain way. Yeah. Now they've got to change, and this is an example. And it's sad for the Queen because, in a way, what she was doing was fantastic work, but unfortunately it's been overshadowed. OK, well, let's come to you, Wayman Bennett, from Stand Up to Racism. What was your reaction when you first oh. heard these claims and read the full transcript? I say the undisputed transcript about that conversation. Yeah. Look, it exposes a layer of racism which um, was first raised by Meghan about um, how she was disproportionately treated when she joined the royal family, which, by the way, has been denied by people like Pier Piers Morgan, and who, who denied that was taking place and has gone Well, no, out. he didn't deny it was taking place. He had no reason to know either way. But the point was that... Oh, I'm, what I'm trying to say... Meghan, so when Meghan and Harry made those claims, they didn't say who and they didn't say what. Yeah, but there was, there was something which was whipped up of hostility against them because they raised something which needed to be treated. It's perfectly reasonable to turn around and say there are levels of racism, especially when you have children that are definitely mixed heritage and that you want them to be treated equally, um, and you raise it and you want it to be treated and you feel that it's not being treated. And I think that one of the things, if in order to treat something that's wrong, you have to challenge it. I mean, a meeting about domestic violence against women should not be discussing the origin of, of where people are from. It should be dealing essentially with a subject which we... Well, I mean, it's a, it's a, no, but it, this wasn't a meeting. I mean, this was a reception. Everyone's got a drink in their hand or a cup of tea, and so people are going to be making conversation. The royals ru routinely say, hey, where are you from? And then you say, oh, I'm from, you know, I've travelled up from Bristol for the day. Oh, lovely. I mean, the, uh, the, the answer that, that uh, Ngozi Filani gave, first of all, was the obvious answer. Where are you from? I'm from Sister Space. You know, this is the charity. This is why I'm here. You know, I'm, I run this charity, you know. 
know where you're from. Okay, they think, oh, geographically, oh, I'm, we're based in Hackney. I mean, her first two answers were you know, very, you know, innocent answers to what appeared to be innocent questions. It was when the interrogation continued. Can we, can we deduce from the conversation, the, the questions of, a, of an 83-year-old woman, aristocratic woman, the attitudes within the royal household as a whole, um, the royal family as a whole. Uh, does Prince William's swift action saying uh, this was wrong, shouldn't have happened, she can't be part of the royal household anymore. Does that tell us that there has been a generational change? Does that does that resolve this issue? Um, let's talk about Prince Andrew because he's also in the news over the weekend. Um, but he's angry about losing his uh, 24 hour armed police protection, apparently at the cost of three million pounds a year to taxpayers. Now. Um, I mean, yeah, you have to have a number of people on duty 24-7. They get holidays, they get nights off, you know, they get, they, they, they work, we don't work every every single day. Um, so a huge number of staff are involved in that. Um, the argument being he's no longer a working royal, he doesn't need it. But I feel this, for me, it's the same issue as with Prince Harry, which is they, they need this protection, not because they're a working royal, but because they are members of the royal family. That wasn't their choice. They were born into it. And therefore, he either needed it you know, a year ago or today, or he doesn't, or, or he needs it now, but he can't, he doesn't suddenly not need it, he doesn't suddenly not, not face a threat, surely? Uh, he doesn't, uh, he clearly faces a threat. I think it's actually the level of the protection that we're talking about, um, because clearly, while he is within a sort of royal confines, he will, there will be some level of protection. What it is, he doesn't get out and about like he used to, so there, <laughs> there is no need for the level of protection that he once had. Um, and, and of course, though, it's all part of Prince Andrew wanting to feel that he's still a viable member of the royal family. Yeah. Well, that's not happening. And it's the same with Prince Harry, who now, of course, lives over in the United States. So he's outside the sort of remit of this uh, country's protection. So while, he, yes, he is a member of the royal family, and there is an undoubted security risk attached to that, and I am sure the royal family are mindful of that. It's just that it probably it's been ratcheted down a tad to reflect his current status. And it is what we all got to do is look at how they can save money because yeah. it, it, three million is quite a lot of money. Well, if you think about it, that amount of money on each individual royal, we're talking about huge sums of money, aren't we? Um, let's also talk about, um, I suppose, the, the new queen, Queen Camilla, um, Queen Consort, she has decided to scrap the term ladies in waiting. She's going to have lady companions. Um, what, what, what is what is this job? Are these people who sort of, you know, put toothpaste on her toothbrush and help her uh, get no, dressed? No. What do they do? No, no, uh, no, they certainly do not do that. What they, not, uh, when you, the ladies in waiting were very much uh, for the Queen, they were very much hands on and also would be writing letters and very much part of the day to day uh, operation of the Queen's household. That, but clearly the Queen's consort has said, taken a different view that these six ladies, I think it is, uh, will be basically available when she goes on visits, not to be full time members of staff, but they will be there sort of discreetly walking a pace behind as she goes and conducts public duties. So that it's that is in the sense. She's sort of they're talking. sort of aides, but sort of they're friendly aides. I mean, because I looked well, at the yes. list of people, I don't know who any of these people are, but they all sounded very, very posh. There was a lot of lady this, countess that going on. Well, um, uh, well I do know some. Uh, of course of you do. You have, din <laughs> you have dinner with these people because you're well, so Well, I do posh. actually with a couple of them, so it's fine. <laughs> but um, and, uh, very nice have you they are too. Have you dated and any of them, Rupert? Um, have I? No, I haven't. That was a bit I of a pause. I haven't dated any of them. I have a very leading question. But anyway, no, I have <laughs> not. That was not where I was expecting to go. <laughs> but I do know them well. But, uh, and, but the fact of the matter is, they will be an important part of the operation when she goes out mm -hmm. and about. And that is the... Uh, I think the Queen Consort doesn't want a, a big machinery behind her. No. But actually, she does carry out a lot of public duties and doesn't want it to be a burden to say just two or three, but actually can spread the load so that the other members can actually get on with their normal lives. Yeah, I mean, especially as they, again, they thinned it down. You haven't got Harry and Meghan, you haven't got Prince Andrew, you're kind of limiting it on people who, I mean, people want a royal to turn up, they want royal patrons, that means they get the coverage, the local paper, and you get more money. And, you know, there is a purpose in that sense. Because I've met a number of these just stop oil idiots, none of whom come from London. And, of course, it makes me ask them the question, well, why don't you go to your hometown yes. or your home village and create such disruption there and see how you get on?
Well, no, I'd like them to go to China and do it, then see how they get on, because they seem to be very, very, very concerned about whether we've got, or whether we're insulated, whether we're doing any more uh, drilling in the either shale gas or uh, or whatever at all, uh, or in the oil sea, uh, in the North Oil for North Oil, the North Sea for North Sea oil and gas. Um, but they seem remarkably unbothered by coal-fired power stations in China. Who knew? Yes, who knew? But there again, you see, when you have the sense of entitlement that these people had, yeah. that they can disrupt every working men and women's lives, people trying to get to hospital, triple, but you know, all manner of things that people want to do as part of their daily business. When you have that sense of entitlement, that you can utterly disrupt that with with probably very few consequences. Yeah. Then this, I'm afraid, is what we've got. And now they've got a new tactic and the police are going to have to come to grips with this in some way, shape or form. Uh, and meanwhile, until they do, we're all going to be disrupted. Well, exactly. And we, we understand that Rishi's not the Prime Minister's you know, calling in police chiefs and saying, basically, banging heads together, you need to get on and deal with this. We've seen, I mean, over 500 arrests when we had the the, act, the month of action in... Uh, oh, I've lost track. Was it October? Yeah, it was October. Then it's supposed to end for a couple of days and then it seemed to start all over again. Um, but we've had people who were sort of bragging about the fact they'd been arrested a dozen times. How come if you've been arrested a dozen times, what are you doing on the streets still able to carry out these protests? I mean, look, I believe in the right to protest. Believe me, it's part of freedom of speech and things. But what these protests are doing, not in this case, that walking slowly, is is often illegal protests, damaging buildings, throwing paint over private property, um, damaging works of art, which I think is just beyond appalling um and um, um and uh, you know and and, uh, and and some of these protests like you know sitting down in the road if you or i sat down in the road we'd be moved on and arrested why are they able to act with what appears to be impunity one well, crucially the prince and princess of wales william and kate are off to the states on their trip of course they're not going to be seeing harry and Meghan, but news stories have emerged about this credible threat that the former scotland yard chief has said um up to to uh, megan which of course brings back all those security issues when they're in the country the credible threats that were made uh, to her and to Harry. Yes, he said um, the sort of extreme white uh, right um, people who have done this. Some have been um, arrested uh, and some are just nameless. But it is absolutely horrible and it en engulfs all the royal family, actually. You get from the right and you get from the left. And actually, um, I think people are getting used to being threatened. Um, I know any royal journalist um, is actually also threatened all the time with really? death, rape and all these things. I think we're living in a, in a very harsh community where people can hide behind it and make terrible threats. Yeah. I mean, we, we know, you know, all those claims about, you know, the, ra the racist abuse that, that Meghan had had. And again, I mean, I... I I, I certainly didn't say it early on, but this stuff is this stuff is is, is ongoing. Uh, in terms of the royal couple going off to the states, there's going to be a, you know a big award ceremony, the Earthshot Prize, and we've got a load of big stars like Billie Eilish who are going to be performing. This though, all uh, as we see, I mean Harry and Meghan getting that so humanitarian award, and of course their Netflix documentary is out on the eighth of December, and I'm gonna. Oh, God, I'm going to hate myself, but I will watch it. Uh, and that's what Netflix are counting on. But this is, of course, we're wondering how much editing has been going on since, of course, the sad death of the Queen. Yes, I know. I mean, they haven't been able to control it. And Meghan has said that it hasn't come out in a way that they would have preferred. Oh, dear. And we think that perhaps there's something in there that she um, doesn't want now to be in there. An and unguarded now. moment. Guarded moments, yes. Um, but I think that the um, William and Catherine going there, it's very, very significant. They have to make a big impact because there's fierce competition between the two couples, Meghan and Harry and um, those two. And it's like, you know, one is very dutiful, hardworking, loyal, and the other one is very much me, me, me. And, I can't imagine uh, which ones you're talking uh, about making money and it'll be very interesting the lots of americans no longer like them harry and Meghan. it's Meghan fascinating still. isn't it the poll ratings much higher for william and kate uh, uh, in both countries actually now angela we'll have to leave it there angela levin royal biographer